If you're a fan of classic Doctor Who, you'll no doubt recognise the eerie hypnotic visuals of the original title sequences, created using a technique known as Howl Around, or visual feedback. By pointing a camera at its own monitor feed, the pioneering visual engineers, camera operators and graphic designers created a haunting feedback loop that gave the show its unmistakably strange and atmospheric title sequence. In this After Effects tutorial, I'll show you how to digitally recreate that same effect, capturing the analog grit and surreal charm of the original using modern digital tools. Welcome back everybody, it's been a while isn't it? I'm very pleased to be back and bringing you, I think, my first After Effects tutorial. First step, I'm going to call this Fractal because we're going to be using the extremely versatile um, effect in After Effects called Fractal Noise, which a lot of visual effects are um, based upon. 1080p, 24fps, there we are. Let's create, I should say, a new shape layer and again call that Fractal. Now, I have the video copilot um, effects shortcut here, but if you don't, just go over to effects and presets and type in fractal noise. Fractal noise, drag it in. Now, for this, I find that basic isn't quite the best starting point. I would change this to smeary. The effect fractal noise is controlled, um, a lot of the render time will be uh, dictated by this complexity. Now, if I put this, I believe, up to 12, I mean, you're not going to see a lot because we're not on like 4K, but the more that you add to this, the more detailed the noise is. And we don't need it to be particularly detailed because, as like I say, it's mostly just white blobs. So I turn this down to about four for now. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to all click the stopwatch, which is going to bring up this um, panel here to input some code. And I'm going to type in simply time times, let's say 50 for now. That's going to automatically um, make our howl around or our fractal noise for now um, have this pulsating movement. This is uh, very, very handy to automate without to keyframe anything. It's simply a little bit of code we have to put in time times 50. You can put in time times 5000 if you want, but that would be absolutely insane. <laughs> so let's not do that. What we're going to do now is because we actually don't have an analog camera, we're not creating visual feedback. We're not going to get that kind of pulsating. Um, sensation of the howl around moving towards us so we're going to have to essentially fake it open up transform click the stopwatch for offset turbulence because we're going to want the howl around to essentially move click your stopwatch drag to the end I'm going to go 960 minus let's say minus 4000 that's a good amount of movement I think for now but what we can do later is we can adjust that accordingly if we need to I'm going to take the contrast up to about 150 and the brightness up to maybe 25 or no, maybe about 15. What I'll also do is go into sub settings, sub offset. So essentially what we've done here with offset turbulence, we're going to just do this kind of sub layer to give it a little bit of secondary movement. Again, drag it to the end, minus 1000 here, just to get a little bit of underlying movement to give it a little bit more dynamism. Yeah, it's very subtle. You can see the underlying kind of sub layer of the fractal noise moving slightly faster, but it's, um, it's very subtle. But these subtle effects do go a long way in the end. So for now, that's a decent basis, but it's not really coming to life yet. What we're going to need to do that is create a new composition. I'm going to call this, for the sake of time, I'm going to call it main. Let's drag fractal into main. And let's add mirror. There we are. And let's drag that right into the middle. 960. Okay, you're going to gradually see it coming together. So the mirror here is going to give it that symmetry right down the middle of the frame, which is um, very similar to how a lot of the howl around was generated or treated in the original Doc 2 title sequences. And that was mainly to aid the appearance of the logo, because without the um, howl around being symmetrical, you wouldn't get this kind of uh, wonderful effect when the logo was flaring onto the screen. But now we're going to start to bring it to life and we'll have to adjust it as we go because um, a lot of these effects will counteract each other and inform how the other one works. Although what I think is missing, this looks too detailed. It's not blobby enough. So we're going to go back into the fractal noise, scale this up, turn down the complexity to three. I also want to just up the contrast a little bit more. Now, strangely enough, what we're going to do is add Gaussian blur. I'd say up to about 45 the detail is gone. This is, you know, these areas of contrast are a little bit more flared out. There's not a lot of detail to be seen. What we're going to do now is bring in an effect called extract and 
drag the black point across and it's going to start removing those darker pixels and leaving the lighter pixels behind. I would say we take it to about 130 and black softness just to soften it ever so slightly I'd say about five say. We still have these areas of contrast you can see you have this more white and then there's a little bit grey so what we're going to do is add an effect simple effect called fill and what that will do is simply fill in all the visible pixels with a solid color in this case just pure white what i'm going to do now is add bulge which will help just give that kind of push and pull i'd increase that taper pretty high honestly we want it to be very subtle we want it to feel more elastic we don't want it to just be purely flat you can see the way it moves out from the center and that's getting there. What I'll do now is add CC lens, which mimics the uh, distortion caused by a camera lens. But in this case, we're going to be using it to add a little bit more depth, kind of this pull at the very edge of the screen. Increase the size to 500, and you'll see if I turn it on and off. So I'll take that to about 400, just a little bit less, 240. Very nice. Okay, we're cooking with gas, right back to the fractal. I want to add a little bit more contrast. Let's try 200 and see what that does to us here. Okay, nice. Maybe 190. See, now it's all about adjustment. Let's actually take that complexity up to four and see. Nope, nope, no, 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 no. That movement, that um, right to left movement he added earlier, and that offset turbulence. Let's take off another 1,500. Very good. What I'm going to do is add actually add a second bulge effect, really taper that. I mean, really, really taper it. It needs to be very subtle. Very nice. Okay, right, so we're working with something that's looking pretty good, really. So we've got quite an effective foundation to work from here. Now we should focus on the finer details. I actually think the contrast between the black and the white is too much. It doesn't look organic enough, so what I'm going to do is actually turn off film for now and go back to how it was you can see that contrast there is doesn't look quite right add a simple brightness and contrast let's say to about 95 so there's still a little bit of that left and the contrast i actually turn that down slightly let's turn that down about 30. also these edges slightly too harsh let's add a little bit more softness let's go 15. Yeah, actually, I think that looks slightly better. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, it has these kind of wisps at the end. It's not too f um, too stark. Kind of false motion blur as well, which is nice, which is very um, evocative of that organic analog howl around. So let's actually, yeah, let's keep that softness because it wasn't five. And that's too much. Let's try 30. No, it's too much the other way. Let's go 15. Very nice. Now, um, I think this is purely aesthetic, what I'm about to do, but um, in the original Howl Around, the analog Howl Around, you could physically see the edges of the monitor kind of um, repeating itself off into infinity. It's kind of hard to explain because all of these analog um, byproducts are, you know, very organic, but you want to cre recreate that as best as possible. Let's create a new circle. Hold Shift and you'll get a uh, perfect circle. I will take away the fill. I will add back in a stroke. Let's make it a black stroke. Let's make it about 10 pixels thick. Now we're going to add um, a repeater. Let's do about 45 copies. Let's change the position to zero. And let's add the scale to 101. No, let's not do that. Let's add the scale at about 105. Yeah, lovely. If we turn down the original Gaussian blur, we should bring back in a little bit more of that detail so we can see what um, the effect I'm after. Here we are. You can see this kind of strange banding around the side, which is evocative of the original Howl Around. Let's see. Very nice. Okay. Right. Let's turn Phil back on. Mm. You know what? No, Phil off because really the original Howl Around wasn't pure white. There was some contrast in there. I think that's best left off. Final touches, adjustment layer. First of all, let's add a subtle glow. And I do mean very subtle. Right, glow radius, 60. Oh, no, 100. 
turn that intensity to 0 0.1, 0 0.3, lovely. What we're going to do now is add some grain, that nice final layer. Let's change that from preview to find an output. All right, let's change the size to about 0.7, intensity to about 0.5. Don't want too much, just want enough, a little dusting of grain there. Like a nice dusting of icing sugar on a nice Victoria sponge. Um, okay, I'd like to change the blending mode to add, just to make that grain a little bit clearer. Okay, so I've dragged along the preview area to two seconds because it's quite a hefty... Um, of course quite a hefty render, lots of effects going on, but just so we can loop and see what we've got. Yeah, that's not half bad. And let's add CC Collider. You can have so much fun with effects like this. I mean, this obviously, this is linked, this effect to Doctor Who, but it's it can be the basis of so much more. Um, it really can. Fractal Noise is so versatile and it's just great fun. You can change all sorts of things. Look at this. You're getting that more traditional Doctor Who kind of time tunnel look, especially if I was to really increase the effect of the CC lens. You're very much getting that more kind of space agey Doctor Who time vortex look. Well, thanks guys. I hope you enjoyed this. There's lots of room to experiment. You can add color, like in the Doctor Who title sequences, you can use images in the Howl Around. You can feed in a logo to the Howl Around. Enjoy. Be creative, that's what it's all about.